can't have cookies. No! Hello everyone. In this video we will learn about pagination in WordPress. Now I know pagination sounds like a super boring topic, and it kind of is, uh, but it's a basic building block that we need to get out of the way before we learn about more exciting topics like custom post types, custom fields, and all of the things that make WordPress truly powerful. Okay, so let's begin this video by asking the question, what is pagination? And to answer that, I will share my screen. So this is the home page of my website, uh, but if I click this blog link in the header, here we see a typical blog listing page. So here's one blog post, here's another, here's another, and if I scroll down, uh, I can tell you that there are a total of 10 blog posts on this page. Now my website has more than 10 total posts, but by default, WordPress will show 10 per page. So 10 is the default, but we can customize that by going into our dashboard. And in the settings menu in the sidebar, if we click on reading, here we see an option that reads blog pages show at most, and by default it's 10, but I could change this to two or three just to make the change dramatic and click save changes. And now if I go back to my front end blog and refresh, just as we would expect, now there are only two blog posts per page. So clearly we need some sort of links down here that would let visitors click to read the next two posts and then the next two and then the next two, okay? So that's where pagination comes into play. Now my website currently doesn't have those links because I'm using the theme that we've coded from scratch throughout this video series or this playlist. So let's add in those links right now together. So over in my text editor, I have opened the folder of the currently activated theme and the file that controls the output of this blog listing page is index.php. So here we see the beginning of the loop code and here's the line that gets repeated once for each post. So if we want to add a bit of content just once down at the bottom here, right after this while loop, we could just say echo hello as a test. And there we see it. Uh, but we don't actually want to output hello. What we actually want to output is a link that will take us to a new URL with the next two posts. And WordPress makes this super easy uh, because there's a function named next posts link. All right, so let's save this. And there we have it. So if I click this next page link, we are taken to a new page with two different blog posts. And most importantly, notice the URL. So WordPress added on a slash page slash two because we're on the second page of results. And if we click next page again, no surprises here, we have two new posts and now we're on slash page slash three. All right, now what if our visitors wanted to go back a page? So instead of clicking next page again to go to page four of results, what if they wanted to go back to page two? Well, in our PHP file, we can just say previous posts link. All right, save this. And now we have this previous page link. So I can click that to go back to page two and we could click it again to go back to the original page. So these two functions get the job done, uh, but WordPress also offers us something a bit more advanced. So check this out. I could delete these two functions and instead echo out the results of a function named paginate links. Let's save this and refresh. And you can see that this is similar to how Google handles pagination. So we're currently on page one of posts. So it's not a link. We can't click to go where we already are, uh, but we could click to go to the second page of results or we could click on the third or fourth page, you get the idea. And this function also outputs traditional previous and next links. So I'm happy with this pagination, uh, but my work is not done yet. Because when you're creating a theme, you wanna be sure to add pagination support to any and all listing or results templates. What do I mean by that? Well, we've added pagination support to our index.php file 
But what if a visitor clicked to view a category archive screen? So if I click on opinion, here is a filtered view of only posts with the category opinion. And this page is being powered by archive.php. So I want to go ahead and add pagination to this template. So let's scroll down. And right after this while loop ends, we can just once again echo out paginate links. Save that, refresh this page. Perfect, and now we can see that our archive template has pagination. And before we move on to the juicy part of this video, let's also add pagination support to our search results template. So in the header, if I search this website for the word about, here's the results screen, so results for about, I know that there are more than just these two posts that are showing. All right, so to add pagination support to search results in our text editor, I will open up search.php. And once again, right after this while loop, right after it closes, echo out paginate links. Save that. Perfect. Okay, so that was pretty simple. And the takeaway point here is that when you're dealing with a page where the URL defines which content should be queried, in situations like that, adding pagination is a piece of cake. What do I mean by that? Well, if I click on the blog link, on this page, I don't need to write PHP to tell WordPress what to query. Just based on the URL alone, it knows to query the most recent posts. And if I view a category archive page, so if I click on opinion, Again, I don't need to write PHP to tell WordPress to only query the posts that have the category of opinion. Just based on the URL alone, WordPress already knows to do that. Okay, so adding pagination to this type of a page is a piece of cake. However, what if we have a page where we do not want to rely on the URL to define what is getting queried from the database? Or in other words, what if we are using our own custom queries within our own custom templates. Well, getting pagination to play nicely with our custom queries can be a bit tricky. So for the remainder of this video, that's what we're going to focus on. So as an example, if I click my about page, currently my about page is just a standard page entry that uses the standard page.php template. So this is the content that gets queried from the database. Uh, but let's imagine that for whatever reason, I want this page to use a custom template. And maybe down here below the main content, I want to have a list of the most recent blog posts that have a category of about. So maybe I want to output three of those posts and then have a next pagination link. You get the idea. So now we have a goal of what we want to achieve. Uh, let's work on it together. So first we will create a custom template together. Then we will write a custom query together. And then finally, we'll make sure that pagination successfully works with it. Okay, so let's start with step one. We wanna create a custom template for this about page. So I'm going to take note of the fact that the slug of this page is simply the word about. And with that in mind, over in my text editor, within the theme folder, if I just create a new file and name it page dash and then the slug of the page that I'm targeting, so about.php, and I can say, oh, hello in this file, and if we refresh this page, we can see that it's using that custom template file. Now, there's no sense in writing a brand new template from scratch, so I'm just going to go into the standard page.php and copy all of the contents to my clipboard and then paste it into this new template, page-about, Okay, so now we're back to where we started with this original template, but now we have a file that we are free to modify. So maybe on this about page, I don't want this sidebar. So in page dash about, I'll just delete this get sidebar line and I'll also delete the main column div. All right, next, let's add in a custom query of blog posts right about here. So back in our text editor, right below this entire if statement, even right after we drop out a PHP here, I will just create 
a heading level one that says blog posts about us. And now we just want to write a custom query that pulls in only posts that have a category of about. So to do that, I'm going to need to drop into PHP. And the first thing I'm going to do is create my own variable. I can name it anything I'd like. Uh, let's call it about posts. And we'll set it to equal a new instance of the WP query class. All right, and now we just provide an array of arguments that will tell WordPress what to query from the database. So we'll say array, new pair of parentheses. And then within that new pair, I'm going to drop down just to stay organized. All right, and remember, we only want posts from the about category. So we will say category name, and then we'll set that to equal about. Now notice, I didn't just use an equal sign here. I used an equal sign and then the greater than symbol. Okay, next, let's also say that when it comes to pagination, we only want to list three posts per page. So we can say posts per page and set it to equal three. All right, this is all we need for now. This query looks good. So WordPress will query the database and the collection of posts that it returns will live within our about posts variable. So now we just need to loop through this collection, loop through this variable, and output them onto the page. So let's write a bit of traditional WordPress loop code. Uh, we always want to begin our loop with an if statement to first check to make sure we actually have anything to loop through in the first place. So we'll say if our about posts collection if it actually contains content. So we can look within our object for a method named have posts, and it will return a value of true if there are any posts. And then we'll add a semicolon. And then on a new line, we'll end the if statement. Okay, and now in between these two lines, so if this condition is met, if it's true, we just wanna loop through the collection of posts. So we'll use a while loop. And we'll say while our about posts collection, as long as it still has more posts to loop through, keep the loop running. So we'll just again use the have posts method, add a semicolon here, and then we want to end this while statement. So end while. Okay, and then in between these two lines, anything we type here will happen once for each post in the collection. Now I want to output a bit of HTML, so I'm going to drop out of PHP and then I want to create an HTML list item element. And after this, let's be sure to drop back into PHP. So this code will work properly. All right, and then within our list item, let's create an HTML hyperlink. Okay, and the text that users will actually click on is the title of each blog post. So if I want the title, I can drop back into PHP and say the title. And then we want to provide a URL for each post. So we can just output the permalink. So PHP, the permalink. And in order for these functions to actually work, so the permalink and the title, in order for those to work properly, we need to prepare the right data for each post every time the loop runs. So above this line, within our while loop, we want to be sure to dig into our collection variable and call the method that is named the post. This method will prepare the data for each post as the loop runs so that these functions can do their job. All right, so let's save this and test it out in the browser. Perfect, so we see the three most recent blog posts that have a category of about. Now in terms of pagination, remember we said posts per page equals three. So if I wanted to see the next three blog posts from the about category, you might think it would be as simple as going up to the URL and typing slash page slash two. And before I press enter and actually go to that URL, pay attention to the three posts that are on this original page. So we have about us related blog post, blogging about our team and about us this decade. And even when I go to slash page slash two, Unfortunately, we don't see the next three posts. We see the exact same three. 
So pagination doesn't work with custom queries out of the box, uh, but it's totally within our power to fix that. So check this out. I'm going to go back to the original page, just the normal slash about. And if I go back to our code, within our array of arguments for creating a new query, I can add on another property named paged. And if I set this to two, now we are indeed seeing the next three posts, right? So this is what we were hoping to see on the slash page slash two results. And if I change this to paged equals three, obviously, we only see two new posts because this is all the posts that currently exist in my about category. But the idea is that this is what we would see at the traditional slash page slash three URL. Now clearly it doesn't do us much good to hard code this paged value like this. We want our query to be dynamic. We want it to be aware of the URL that a user is visiting. So back in the browser, if I go to slash page slash two, the question becomes within our PHP code, how can we extract data from the current URL? So in this instance, within our PHP, how can we extract the value of two? Well, luckily the developers of WordPress have us covered. So check this out. Uh, on a new line, I'll create another variable. I can name it anything I'd like. Uh, let's call it our current page. And WordPress has a function named get query var. Now this function accepts all kinds of arguments. You can use this function to extract all sorts of data from the current URL. Uh, but in this case, what we're interested in is the paged value. So the argument in this case that we're looking for is paged. All right, and now with this variable set up within our actual query, instead of hard coding in a number here, we can just use our variable. So our current page. Let's save this and refresh. Perfect, so I'm on slash page slash two and I'm seeing these posts. And if I go back to just the normal page, we see the first three, beautiful. All right, now we're almost done. Uh, next, let's work on adding the actual pagination links below the list, right? So the links that will take you to the next or previous page of results. Now, earlier in this lesson, we learned about a function named next posts link. So let's try using that function again. So it outputs a link right about here. So right after the while loop ends, I'll just say next posts link. And you'll notice that did absolutely nothing. And this is because again, pagination, including pagination functions, don't work with custom queries out of the box. So if we want this function to play nicely with our custom query, we're gonna need to go the extra mile we're going to need to pass this function two arguments. So the first argument is what we want the link text to say. So I'll just say next page. And the second argument is what's important. In order for this function to work, we need to tell it the maximum number of pages that this query needs, right? So are there going to be three total pages of results? Are there gonna be five or 10 pages of results? So to figure out that number of total pages of results, we can just look within our collection of posts. Remember the variable name is about posts. So we can just say about posts, and then we can look within it for max num pages. So now if I save this and refresh, perfect, we see the next page link. So if I click that, the URL, it takes me to slash page slash two, and if I click next page again, we're on to the third page of results. Perfect, and if we want to add in the previous page link, it does work with custom queries out of the box. So we can just say previous posts link. That's all we need, and there it is. But what if you don't want to use these simplistic previous and next links, and what if you want to use the Google-like pagination with individual numbered links? So remember earlier in the lesson, uh, we can delete these two functions. Remember earlier in the lesson when we used echo paginate links? Well, as you might expect, that function doesn't work with custom queries out of the box. 
uh, but it's very simple to fix that. So within these parentheses, we can just provide an array of options. And this function, just like the next posts link, needs to know the maximum number of pages that this query will produce. So this function is on the lookout for a property named total, and then we can just set that to equal our about posts collection, look within it, again, for max num pages. So this way, this function has all of the information about our custom query that it needs to work. So let's save this, refresh, and there we have it. So now we have the numbered pagination. So I'm on page two, I can't click it, but if I wanna to go to page one, beautiful. And if I wanna to go to page three, there you have it. All right, so our task is complete. Uh, but before I close out this video, I wanna give you one last piece of info that might save you a ton of frustration. So throughout this example, we've been using the paged property or the paged parameter. And this works beautifully on most WordPress pages. But if you're going to work on a static front page, right? So if I go to the home page of my website, notice how my home page isn't just a generic blog listing screen, but instead it's using a custom template. All right. And if you also have what we call a quote static front page, if you ever try to implement pagination on a static front page, instead of using the paged option or the paged parameter, when you're working on a static front page, instead you would use an option named simply page instead of paged with a D. All right, so hopefully that saves you a bit of frustration and troubleshooting in the future. And that's going to bring this lesson to a close. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you feel like you learned something. And stay tuned for a bunch of new WordPress tutorials. Now that we've got pagination out of the way, we can cover more exciting topics like custom post types, custom fields, and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. All right, so I'll see you in a new video next week. And until then, take care. In case you're interested, I am working on two brand new premium WordPress courses. One is aimed at absolute beginners and the other is more advanced and it's aimed at developers. In the more advanced course, we will create a fully featured site for a university. We'll learn how to create relationships between different types of content. So for example, between professors and courses and campuses, We'll also learn how to set up live search results using the brand new WordPress REST API. We'll learn the basics of user registration. And we'll also learn how to keep our project organized and how to deploy it from your local dev environment up to a real host. Now these two courses won't launch for another couple of months, but if either of them interests you and you wanna be notified as soon as they do launch, you can go to my website, learnwebcode.com and towards the top of the homepage, you can join my newsletter. Not only will that let you know as soon as the courses launch, uh, but you'll also receive hugely discounted coupons. One last thing, uh, you'll never ever ever see this channel with a Patreon account, uh, because if you do want to support this channel, I want you to receive massive value in return. So I do already have two premium courses available. The first course is about nine hours and it will teach you HTML and CSS from absolute scratch. And the second course is about 15 hours and it's for you if you already know HTML and CSS, but you wanna build up the rest of your skill set so you can land a full-time job as a web developer. All right, that's enough shameless promotion. I will see you in the next video.